Greetings. For this example, we're going to model this tire from scratch. It will be complete and ready for 3D printing by the end of this short video. You can apply the same workflow to texture any cylindrical shape. I prepared these two grayscale images in Photoshop, both at 800 by 800 pixels. The image on the left is for the tire thread, and the image on the right is for the side wall. The black areas will have zero displacement and the white areas will have full displacement, with the gray pixels falling proportionally somewhere in between. The edges were blurred on purpose to provide a slight rounding. Make sure your image maps are square. You'll see why in a moment. These image maps and the Blender project are available for download from my account on Thingiverse. Let's take a look at this diagram. For our workflow, we need to calculate how many times the thread image will be repeated around the circumference. This has to be a whole number, for there to be no seams and for the image map to make up perfectly. You need to use the dimensions from your shape to calculate n as 2 times pi times r divided by w. Round off n to the nearest integer and rag it down, you'll need this value later. You can see how this works by looking at the diagram. If not, don't worry, it will all become clear shortly. Let's model the thread to start with a cylinder of radius r and a depth of 2 times pi times r divided by n. Now everything will work out perfectly seamless when we do the UV mapping a bit later. Let's do this for real now in Blender. Start by adding a cylinder with 128 vertices. Radius 5 centimeters and a depth 2 times pi times 5 divided by 13, where 13 is the value for n for my tire shape, equal to 4 times pi rounded off. Note how you can enter the calculation directly into Blender without needing to use a calculator. Set the cap fill to none and clear the location. Hit tab to edit the cylinder, make sure all vertices are selected, and assign them to a new vertex group named Thread. This defines the region where the thread image will apply. Extrude the thread and scale it by 0.98 to begin forming the sidewall. Create another vertex group Name it Sidewall and assign the selected vertices. Extrude again and scale by 0.6 to finish the sidewall. Now we need to increase the resolution. Use the Loop Cut and Slide tool to add 10 cuts to the thread. Choose a cut value that creates a grid made of squares all the way around your shape. Repeat this for both sidewalls and for the inside surface. I decided to only use five cuts for the inside of my tire. Select less, lock the Z axis and scale by 1.5 to form the inner surface. Select more vertices up to the inner tire bead and remove these vertices from the sidewall vertex group and assign them to a new vertex group named Inside. Test to make sure your vertex groups are assigned properly. We will use these vertex groups to conveniently limit the scope of our texture maps 
and to prevent interference between maps. Now let's add a subdivision modifier set to about two subdivisions on the default Catmull Clark settings. Note how this kind of subdivision neatly rounds off square edges, so it was a good choice for this application. Next we need to mark a seam. Select one of the radial edge loops, then click the mark seam button under UV mapping. This will tell Blender where to cut the thread when we UV map in the next step. Split the workspace and bring up the UV image editor. Click open and navigate to the location of your image maps. Select them. Click open to load the images into Blender. Select the tire image for reference. Select the thread vertex group and click Unwrap Unwrap under UV Unmapping. Set the pivot to 2D cursor and make sure the cursor is located over the lower left most vertex. Scale by 13, the number we calculated for N. Next, select only the sidewall vertex group and select the sidewall image map in the UV editor for reference. We'll need to unwrap each sidewall separately. Turn off depth buffer clipping so we can see through to the selected vertices. Deselect the lower sidewall and switch to top ortho view. Under UV mapping, click UV unwrap project from view bounds. Select the upper sidewall and switch to bottom ortho view. Under UV mapping, click Unwrap Project From View Bounds. Create a new material, name it Thread. And assign the Thread Image Map to it. Set the Splay Shading to Texture to see the Thread Image Map applied all over the tire. Create another material, assign it the sidewall image map, and name it sidewall. Select only the sidewall vertex group and assign them to the sidewall material. You should now see the image maps positioned on the tire without distortion or visible seams. The only remaining step is to apply the displace modifier using our texture maps. Switch over to the modifier tab. And add a displace modifier. Set the texture coordinates to UV. The set vertex group to thread. Click New to create a new texture, jump to the Texture tab, and assign the Texture Image Map to this texture. Go back to the Modifier tab and set Strength to about 5. Nothing is happening because we are in Edit Mode. Hit Tab to exit Edit Mode. That's not right. The displacement is backwards. That just means our normals are flipped. Tab back into edit mode and choose Mesh Normals Recalculate Outside. Then tab back out to see the proper displacement. Copy the Displace modifier to create one for the sidewall. Select the sidewall vertex group, jump over to the texture tab, and assign the sidewall image map to the texture. Jump back to the modifier tab and set strength to minus one for this modifier so the, the displacement goes inward and cuts out the sidewall detail. Increase subdivision until you're satisfied with the amount of detail 
and then add a decimate modifier with a factor of about 0.2 to 0.1 before exporting to STL. Let's do file, save as, save as Blender file, and now the changes we do from this point forward are going to be irreversible. So do save as again, and increment the version number by one. Save. The tire model is now suitable for exporting for DLP or SLA style printing. However, for FDM, the part would be difficult to print, and it would work better if we bisected it and printed it in two parts so it could print flat on the build plate with a little bit of support around the bead. We'll use some scraps of filament as pins so that the two halves register perfectly together. Let's apply the modifier stack now. Start with the first modifier and work your way down the stack. It's important to go from top to bottom. Now let's decimate by about 0.1. Let's set our 3D cursor back to the center of the tire model. Now let's add a cube. We'll make it a 8 centimeter radius and displace it 8 centimeters on the Z axis. So that will serve as a bisector coming out right in the center of our tire. Let's name that a tire bisector. Now, cylinder is the tire. We, we never named that. Let's call that tire part A, since that's only going to be half the tire now. Let's add a Boolean modifier to intersect the tire with our bisector, so we get half. Let's hide the bisector, and you see we have just half of our tire there. So go into solid view mode so we can see that a little clearer. Okay, let's add another cylinder that will be our pin cutter so that we can use filament as a guide. So we'll make it a one millimeter radius to fit a 1.75 millimeter uh, filament. We'll repeat that four times around the radius of our tire. Depending upon the geometry of your own part, this step will vary, of course. But I have found that uh, this technique works perfectly. Whenever you need to bisect parts and print them get the two sides back together. There's always plenty of scraps of filament laying around here. So there we have half a tire. Let's add our pin cutter. And we'll name it pin cutter and let's add another Boolean modifier to be a difference and to subtract our pin cutter from the tire half. There you see the holes appear. So well, here's half a tire, so all we need to do is do a shift D, duplicate that half, and we'll have our other half. We'll name that tire part B, and change the intersect to a difference modifier, so we get the opposite side. So there are our two tire halves. Let's take a little look, inspect them. Looks like it works just perfectly. We'll use filament, as I mentioned, for the pins. And there's our two sides. Take a look at it with the material turned on. And uh, let's go over to our 3D printing plugin tab and simply export the parts. And you're all ready for 3D printing.